What's going on everyone, it's RGB Tech back here again. And in today's video, we're taking a quick look at RPCSX, the official continuation of the RPCS3 Android port. This new emulator carries over almost everything from the build of RPCS3 Android version. Same interface, similar performance, but it's now under the name RPCSX, version 1.0, and it requires Android 12 or higher to run. Now let's head into the settings. Go to Custom GPU Settings. As usual, if you're using a Snapdragon device, you'll need to import the turnip driver that matches your device. Next, go to Advanced Settings, then into Core. Everything here stays the same, just leave it at default. Now under Video Settings, set the Graphics API to Vulkan, then go to Custom Driver. Enable Turbo Mode, and if you want, turn on the Performance Overlay as well. Set the resolution to the lowest, which is 480p. Set Shader Precision to Low and Keep everything else just like we've done in our recent videos. If you're playing God of War 3, make sure to enable write color buffers and read color buffers, though this is optional. Also, enable stretch to fit display for a better full screen experience. And that's it. These are the best video settings. Leave everything else at default for the most optimal performance. You'll see the UI looks pretty much the same as RPCS3 for Android, but there's been some rebranding. Now, you might be wondering, what's that all about? Well, RPCSX is basically a PlayStation 3 emulator, just like RPCS3, but the goal now is even bigger. It's aiming to support PS4 and even PS5 games in the future. And yeah, that's actually true. The devs behind it have plans for next-gen support. So maybe, in the next two to three years, we could be playing PS4 and PS5 games right on our Android devices. And if we tap on the RPCSX icon here, just like before, You'll see the menu with options like settings, friends, the ability to take screenshots, save game states, and more. And look at this, guys. We're actually getting better performance and it feels more stable. Plus, the shader compilation speed has definitely improved. So yeah, this emulator is still in the early stages, but it's showing a lot of promise. Performance is improving, and things are looking pretty stable so far. We'll just have to wait and see how it evolves in the coming updates. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.